Excellencies, uh, distinguished members of the Parliamentary Assembly. First, thanks for inviting me and thanks, President, for your kind words. And like uh, the chairperson in office, uh, it would have been so much nicer if we could have met uh, personally in, in Vienna. And I look forward to that opportunity. But also, uh, just let me tell you that I will reach out to your delegations whenever I travel, like I recently did when I was in Stockholm, because I very much believe in the added value of close cooperation for the benefit of our organizations. The Parliamentary Assembly is an essential part of the OEC family, and your work is absolutely crucial for the OECE. So let me begin by thanking you for your commitment to the organization, the close cooperation I enjoy with the Secretary General, and for your active engagement in promoting our common values within our constituencies. As parliamentarians, you have your eyes and your ears all around our vast region. And I think this gives you just tremendous knowledge and tremendous expertise on the developments at the country, but also at the regional level, as well as on the security concerns uh, we have in all three dimensions. And I see this as an in invaluable asset for the OECE. The Parliamentary Assembly also provides the OECE with um, new impetus and fresh ideas. Uh, you have been long, long been a leader, for example, in bringing emerging security issues into the OEC debate. And I learned it was the PA that first drew attention to the security threat that trafficking in human beings poses to our region. Today, of course, countering this cruel practice is a very important area of our work, especially now in the light of the pandemic where unfortunately it has grown. The more I have to say, the more I learn about the Parliamentary Assembly, the more opportunities I see for synergies. Many of the PA's special representatives and ad hoc committees are working on issues that complement the OEC's efforts. Uh, it was just mentioned before, issues such as promoting tolerance, non-discrimination, fighting terrorism, combating corruption, also strengthening cooperation with the Mediterranean region, and of course, uh, promoting dialogue as a key tool for conflict prevention and resolution. The OEC has much to gain from your expertise, so I will be looking for ways to cooperate even more closely with the Parliamentary Assembly and to further engage parliamentarians in our work. Dear members of the Parliamentary Assembly, the only constant in life is change. And some challenges hit us by surprise, like the uh, pandemic last year. Others are easier to predict, such as the dramatic impact climate change has already and will have even more so uh, in the coming decades. We need to prepare the OEC for both kinds of challenges. And we can do so by setting out future-oriented priorities for the organization, but also by reflecting, uh, improving our working methods so we can react quickly to new circumstances. And that's why uh, the PA's recent call for action, which looks for higher level engagement and support for the OECE, is a very important and a very timely initiative. Um, in the next few years, I think we should reflect together on what the OEC should look like when we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Helsinki Final Act in 2025. We should be ambitious and we should also work towards concrete outcomes that will strengthen security for everyone. And I'm, I'm delighted that the Parliamentary Assembly is already very actively debating this. And I wish to offer my utmost support to this ongoing reflection. Allow me to maybe touch upon a few topics we could include in this reflection process. One of the OEC's great assets is its holistic approach to security. In our daily work, we see how complex, but also how intertwined today's security challenges are. And this means that also the uh, resolutions have to be comprehensive. If you just think about transnational organized crime and corruption. To mention one example, the OEC is doing good work in Southeast Europe to increase regional cooperation and to build authorities' capacities to tackle these challenges effectively. 
also by increasing standardization of anti-money laundering and complex fraud investigations. This is a joint effort uh, by, by, by many, and I think that strengthening our cross-dimensional approach through efforts like these, we will be more effective at strengthening stability, but also ultimately preventing conflicts. Conflict prevention is the engine for all of the OEC's work. Along with strengthening the cross-dimensional approaches, I see capacity building as a key tool for conflict prevention. Investing in education, in training, institutional capacity uh, building, this will all increase the resilience of societies, which is also a precondition uh, for uh, conflict prevention. And it's a critical element of the work the OEC field operations, the institutions and the secretariat specialized departments do. I'd like to mention the Border Management Staff College in Dushanbe and the OEC Academy in Bishkek that are very important capacity builders. Resilient societies are better equipped to withstand the root causes of conflict uh, and to help maintain stability and security. Another proven way to strengthen the effectiveness of our conflict prevention efforts is to increase diversity and gender equality. And there is abundant empirical evidence that shows that the meaningful involvement of women in conflict prevention and resolution efforts will substantially contribute to their success. And this is why I'm very grateful uh, to Anne Linde and the Swedish OEC chair for making women, peace and security one of their priorities. And it's also been well demonstrated that if women are given the opportunity, they can contribute significantly to sustainable economic growth and more resilient societies. So we need to step up our efforts to ensure equal access to economic and financial resources, education, formal employment, including in leadership positions. Women's economic empowerment benefits society as a whole, but it also strengthens stability and security. And again, I'm glad that this is also one of uh, the Swedish chair's priorities. Comprehensive security means that no one should be left out. And that's why the OEC is providing more opportunities for young women and men to raise their concerns and but also share their ideas on the future of security in our region. After all, it's today's young people who will have to contend with tomorrow's problems. So we need to engage them as essential partners. Our Perspectives 20 to 30 Youth Initiative provides an excellent platform to do exactly that, to bring young people together with diplomats and policymakers to share their recommendations for tackling what they see as the major security challenges of the coming decade. The chair's appointment of a special representative on youth and security, Ms. Rosaline Mabina, a young woman actively advocating for demo democracy, sends a very strong uh, signal of commitment to advance youth inclusion and youth participation in the life of our societies. And maybe another point I'd like to make, um, I think we have to think even more about the nexus between technology and security. There is growing awareness about the risks that technology pose, cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, one example, but we should also not overlook to uh, technology's potential to contribute to conflict prevention. Ladies and gentlemen, I take my role as the OEC's Chief Administrative Officer seriously. So my ambition is to increase the organization's efficiency and effectiveness, and, in the, and indeed the chairperson in office has tasked me to do this. I would want to make the OEC more inclusive and more uh, collaborative, and I'm committed to transparency and uh, accountability. But also, uh, let me uh, um, uh, say this before I come to an end, to have an effective and future-proof OECE, this requires participating states to provide the organization with sufficient funds and with a less time-consuming budget process to fully implement our mandate. Dear colleagues, I know you recognize how vital the OEC's work is, so I hope we will be strong advocates for the organization in your parliaments 
including by lobbying for a more sustainable budget for the OECE. In turn, you can count on me to be a prudent, to be a transparent and to be a very responsive manager. And very last point, we have to raise the visibility of this organization. Despite the OEC's importance for the region, I have noticed that citizens and at times even the specialized public in many of our states lack a clear understanding of the organization's added value. And there is no other security organization in our region with the OEC's potential to bridge differences through dialogue and cooperation and to build trust and reduce tensions. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to working together with you in the entire parliamentary assembly to ensure that the OEC can indeed be recognized as the world's leading regional security organization. Thank you.